Welcome back to the channel everybody. In today's video, I'm gonna go over my top 20 roller coasters that I have been on. And for the record, I've been on around 100 coasters, so your favorite might not be on here, but over the next few years, we will be adding new parks and this list will be changing quite dramatically. In today's video, is going to be my list. Stay tuned to the channel because Abby is going to do her list and so is Annabella and Ethan. So you get to see the differences between all four lists. Now off to the video. Number 20, Hydra at Dorney Park. Hydra is a B&M floorless roller coaster and we really didn't know what to expect when going to Dorney Park. However, Hydra really surprised us. It is buttery smooth and the weird thing about it, it is super quiet it doesn't have the standard B&M roar that all the B&Ms have. Hydra stands at a height of 95 feet and it actually drops at 105 feet down into a valley and it reaches speeds of 53 miles an hour and has seven total inversions. It's a really fun coaster and if you ever get out to Dorney, you gotta ride Hydra. Number 19, Millennium Force at Cedar Point. Now we got to ride Millennium Force for the first time this year and although it is a great giga coaster, it is not our favorite. It's got a great first drop and a great first turn, but the rest of it just kind of meanders. But what makes it so fun is that it's just a long ride experience and it's not very forceful, so it's very re-rideable. However, I do believe that the seatbelts are a little on the tight side because I have seen skinny people have issues getting on Millennium Force. Overall, it's a really fun roller coaster and definitely gotta try it out when you go to Cedar Point. Coming in at number 18 is Copperhead Strike at Carowinds. Copperhead Strike is a mock multi-launch coaster which doesn't really focus on the launches but focuses on hang time. Hang time is where you hang upside down at the top of each inversion. Copperhead really surprised me as far as how fun and how re-rideable it is. The launches aren't very powerful, but the hang time you get from each inversion is awesome. It only has lap bars, which is pretty cool. You have nothing going over your shoulders. And the best part about it, honestly, is we broke down in the rain on it. So it kind of made it a very fun, unique experience because we were able to sit on the coaster for like 20 minutes and made a good memory out of it. Number 17, Lightning Rod at Dollywood. Lightning Rod was actually our first RMC roller coaster. RMC stands for Rocky Mountain Construction. Now Lightning Rod was not converted, it was actually built from the ground up. But the cool thing about this, at the time we rode it, it was the only launching wooden coaster on the planet. The launch up the hill was awesome. The hills were awesome, the first drop, was really cool down in the ravine. It was an experience that we never got to try until we got on an RMC because of the very fast switchbacks and the changing of direction and the crazy airtime, the quad down at the end. Still a fun roller coaster and one of Dollywood's best investments. Number 16, Shivering Timbers at Michigan's Adventure. Now we took a special day to go up to Michigan's Adventure and it was about a seven hour drive from where we were and it was kind of last minute. As you're pulling into the parking lot, Shivering Timbers is gigantic. It's the only thing you can see. The wooden structure is awesome to look at. The ride experience itself is pretty good. It's about like a hyper coaster, just airtime hill after airtime hill after airtime hill and so on and so forth. It does have a couple potholes in it. Kind of can get painful in some spots, but it's definitely worth mentioning. And I wouldn't say it's worth going to Michigan's Adventure for it, but if you're in the area, I would definitely check it out. Number 15, Thunderbird at Holiday World. Now Thunderbird is a launched B&M wing coaster. We weren't expecting the launch to be that forceful. However, it was very forceful. We typically like B&M wing coasters. We've been on three of the four in the United States. Didn't really know what to think of Thunderbird. However, after we rode it, the launch is awesome. And then you go deep off into the woods and you flip and you have a bunch of near misses. It is an awesome roller coaster and definitely worth visiting Holiday World if you're ever in the area. 14, Mystic Timbers, Kings Island. This is probably the best wooden roller coaster in Ohio. Sorry, Beast fans. I grew up riding the Beast 
and I get what you're saying, but however, after the first time I rode Mystic Timbers in 2018, this thing just is amazing. It doesn't look like much, but it's one of those don't let the size fool you roller coasters. The drop's okay, provides a little bit of laterals, but as you crest over that first airtime hill and drop down the backside, things just go crazy. It's left, right, up, down, left, right, up, down, it just the whole time you're thrown around like a rag doll. However, it's so smooth, there's no potholes, it absolutely glides over the track. The only thing that I've heard people say is the shed was a disappointment. I'm not going to spoil it. The shed is just a brake run waiting for the train in front of you to get unloaded. But overall, this coaster is awesome. And a lot of people will rate this the best coaster at Kings Island. Now on to number 13 would be Twisted Timbers at King's Dominion. Here's another RMC that I was talking about. This was an old wooden coaster converted to a modern steel coaster. Now the reason why it's so low is because I feel like we got bad rides on it. We got two rides and it was raining and kind of cold early part of the day so we didn't get to really feel the full force and it has crazy ejector airtime throughout the whole layout. It's definitely one of the most fun coasters at King's Dominion. Number 12, Lightning Run. Kentucky Kingdom. Now I wasn't expecting much going to Kentucky Kingdom honestly and when I seen this coaster I'm like oh it's around 100 feet tall it's it's you know going to just be a regular coaster and I was pleasantly surprised. The first drop on this thing is amazing and it's only like 100 feet. It is buttery smooth. All the transitions are awesome. I really enjoyed this coaster. I think I, I got about eight or nine rides on it this last summer and it is one of my favorites. I don't know why there's not any more Chance Hyper GTX models out there. It is so fun and if you're ever in the Louisville area, gotta try Kentucky Kingdom. Number 11, Gatekeeper at Cedar Point. Now this was our second wing coaster as we already rode the one in Dollywood. And let me say this is the most picturesque roller coaster at Cedar Point. The way it glides over the front entrance as you're walking in is so cool. It gets you so hyped. The first drop alone is one of the most cool experiences on a roller coaster. You flip upside down very slowly, so you get hang time, but then you start going down the hill upside down, so then you kind of get G-forces and hang time, but it's so much fun. And these are more graceful than your inverted coasters. They're very smooth, they kind of go through the inversion slow, but that's what makes them re-rideable. And that's one of the reasons that I really liked Gatekeeper. Coming in at number 10, is Storm Chaser at Kentucky Kingdom. Now here is another RMC. If you can't tell, I really like my RMCs. They are so much fun. This is another wooden coaster converted into a steel coaster. And let me tell you, this is one of the most intense roller coasters. It doesn't look like much as it's only around 100 feet. But this thing throws you around like a rag doll. And I was lucky enough to get about 20 rides on this this last summer. And we went on some really hot days. So this thing was hauling butt. And I did about four or five rides in a row before I had to say, okay, I'm taking a break because the way it flings you and your body around is crazy. But overall, this is one of my favorite RMCs that I've got to experience so far. Number nine, Diamondback at Kings Island. I first rode Diamondback in its opening year in 2009. It took me about another 10 to 11 years to ride it again. And I have ridden it over 150 times because it was the kid's favorite for the longest time. Diamondback has an amazing first drop, one of the most fun first drops as it's profiled near perfect and then you go into multiple airtime hills. It is an awesome roller coaster. It's usually one of the first ones we go to at Kings Island. And as we've only been on two B&M Hypers, it is still our favorite by far. There's no other hyper coaster that we've been on yet that competes with Diamondback. If you're ever in the area of Kings Island in Cincinnati, you've got to try out Diamondback. Number eight is my absolute favorite inverted coaster, which is Afterburn at Carowinds. When I went to Carowinds, I didn't expect too much from this invert because I've rode many inverts already and this one just blew me out of the water. I've been on four or five of these things and I'm not sure what it is about this one, whether it's the, the tunnels or the intensity or just the layout, but I got like 10 or 15 rides on this thing without even getting off and I absolutely love it. The inversions are awesome. The first drop's awesome. The theming's awesome. It is just a world-class invert. If you're ever near Carowinds, you gotta stop in and give Afterburn a ride. You will not be disappointed. 
Coming in at number seven is Maverick at Cedar Point. Now Maverick is another one that don't let the size fool you. This little coaster only stands around 100 feet tall and is way more intense than the 300 foot coaster that it sits next to. That beyond vertical drop makes you feel like you are falling out and it is crazy. And then you stay low to the ground and you have a bunch of switchbacks and then you get have more airtime hills and inversions then you hit a second launch where it hits 70 miles an hour and it hauls through the rest of the layout it is so fun the only thing i don't like about it is that it always gets a long line at least in our experience but overall it is still my number seven number six the legend at holiday world now this was a coaster that i absolutely did not expect anything from I was just thinking, oh, it's going to be your standard wooden coaster. And this is one of the only coasters I've ever got off and felt like I just completed a mission. This thing is nuts. And it's not even really the first drop or the speed or anything. It is the laterals. This thing will literally push the person next to you on top of you. But all in all, this coaster surprised the crap out of me. It was so much fun. And I think we got two or three rides on it. And it is one of my favorite roller coasters I have ever been on. The night ride was absolutely epic because it was 100 degrees out and that thing was flying. If you ever get a chance, to go out to Holiday World, do not sleep on this ride. Now to the top five. Starting at number five is Orion at Kings Island. This was my first Giga Coaster. So to me, you know, when I'm used to 100 and 200 foot roller coasters, to stare up that tall and to ride a roller coaster with a 300 foot drop was actually pretty terrifying. Orion gets a lot of hate that I don't think that it deserves because on its own, this coaster is awesome. Out of all the coasters I've been on, Orion has the best first drop. It is profiled different than the other Gigas and it lasts a little bit longer even though it's not as tall. Orion is also one of the most best paced as far as elements. The speed hill is awesome, even the turnaround's awesome. And it has a bunch of pops of airtime, but it's not overly intense. I've ridden this thing 10 times in a row before, hot lapping it on a hot summer days. And you just don't get any headaches, you don't get any body aches, you don't feel sore after riding it. That's why it's so high up on my list because it is absolutely pure fun from start to finish. Coming in at number four, Intimidator 305 at King's Dominion. This is the equivalent of a car wreck of roller coasters. This thing is stupid intense. The bone crushing G-forces, the really fast switchbacks, it has a little bit of air time on the second hill, but other than that, you are traveling 95 miles an hour, 10 feet off the ground, whipping back and forth. This is one of the only coasters that made me start blacking out from the insane amount of G-forces when I was riding it. I checked out after two back-to-back -back rides because my body just couldn't handle it. If you ever get a chance and you're out near King's Dominion, go in there and ride it once. As long as you don't have any neck or back problems, you should be all right. Coming in at number three is the Voyage at Holiday World. Now, a lot of people say the Beast is the best wooden coaster, but I'm sorry, those people are wrong. If you go into it with a clear and open mind, no nostalgia, the Voyage is absolutely amazing. It is one of the longest wooden roller coasters in the world, and the pacing is incredible. It does not slow down the whole time. It hauls butt out into the woods. It turns around right when you think the ride is over. You hit a mid-course brake run. You're like, okay, that's the end, and then it starts diving off the mountain again, picking up speed. It is so smooth. Holiday World does a great job of keeping this thing smooth, but this is one of the best roller coasters in the world. Number two, Fury 325 at Carowinds. Now, we already knew that Fury was going to be an amazing ride, but after about 20 rides on it this last year, this thing is crazy. It stands 325 feet tall, and I believe has a 320 foot first drop. This thing is way up there. It is the tallest roller coaster in the world with a traditional lift hill and not a launch. So going up the lift hill, it just builds anxiety because you were so far off the ground. However, this is what a Giga is supposed to be. 
shows off its speed, a lot of G-forces, but not too much to where you gray out or anything. It has very awesome transitions. It has great airtime. Carowinds is awesome to where if there's nobody in line behind you, you get to ride it again. So we were able to get multiple, multiple rides on Fury, and that's why it sits at my number two. And coming in at number one, Steel Vengeance at Cedar Point. When you get off Steel Vengeance for the first time, you feel like you accomplished something. It is the most complete roller coaster experience that I have ever experienced. From everything from the first drop all the way to the brake run, it is endless air time and the way it weaves through the structure and you go upside down multiple times, it is incredible. We rode Steel Vengeance for the first time in May and there has been nothing that can dethrone it as of yet. Steel Vengeance still reigns supreme as king of the roller coasters on my list. You've got to get up to Cedar Point and ride Steel Vengeance. Thank you for sticking through this long of the video. We really appreciate it. If you would, like, comment, subscribe if you like this kind of content as we are currently in the off season of roller coasters so we can't provide you with any new vlogs. Hopefully we'll see you in the next video and thank you for watching.